Hey, we're here at Gridiron Football, Media Day 2024. I'm here with head coach Larry Mativia of Ballet High School. Coach, what's going on, baby? Oh, having a great day, man. Good, good day, good opportunity. Good day, Coach. Hey, Coach, tell us about some of the things y'all been doing this summer getting prepared for the 24 season, man. Well, this summer we started off, we had a good morning, uh, bringing in kids in the morning workouts and everything. We had a good group, solid group come in. Good, uh, a real good conditioning part of it. And also we did a great job being able to install with some kids and stuff like that. Right. Kids getting understanding, finding kids role and stuff. And more so, just having the kids hang around each other. We, right. We're trying to... We're trying to get it where they realize, hey man, this is a fraternity. Right. You know, and uh, so with have been a fraternity, you, 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 everybody's out here with brothers. Right. With have been brothers, it means that we have to always look out for the betterment of everybody in the family, whether they like it or not, whether they comfortable with it or uncomfortable with it. You got to stand up if one person is not here or one person slacking. It's not that you can complain about it. Is that what are you going to do to make sure he there or to find out what's going on? If something wrong, what can we do to help? If he's not here, what can we do to get on him to make sure that he's an important part of what we're trying to build here? Right, right, man. And I know that, you know, playing at, at Grambling and, and being a starting center and, and winning championships and stuff like that, you know, all about, you know, what it takes to to do that and what that looks like. So yeah. um, so that definitely. Tell me <clears> about <throat> some of the, the 707s y'all been doing this summer. Well, we, we got out of this summer doing the, I didn't want to do the 707 tournament. Okay. But we were lucky. We were able to get like two two or three teams a week. Right. And so we were able to do it more as a, I, I like to think a lot of coaches would like it as a practice yeah. a schedule. So. We were able to get in situations and go scrimmages with uh, what we're going all our game mode. We were also able to get back there and say, hey, coach, let's stop. Can you run that back? Let's talk my kids through what we're trying to do. So we had a good and, and installing a new defense, also along with a, with a new offensive uh, philosophy and stuff right. like that. It was more the kids being able to sit there and actually learn and, and, and uh, get a feel for the for what we're doing. Yeah, tell us about the spring, man. I know we was at the spring game at, at um what the, that was at Scotlandville. At Scotlandville, so yeah. So there, there was a four team spring, but um, tell us about some of the things that you know um <coughs> that way where you was able to see guys that's going to be stepping up, guys that may not have you know um because that's mainly mainly what the spring for guys. You can kind of just see who your new guys is that going to step in roles or guys that didn't left. Yeah, well we we had. Man, I was pleasantly surprised. I went into the spring, and it, it wasn't until maybe about two or three hours before the spring game, me and uh coordinator and uh, AD was sitting there talking to each other, Coach Hudson and, and Coach Turner, and we said, man, you realize we're going to have five kids on here who play for us in the football. Come on. And whole, well, basically a brand new offensive line, uh, one kid maybe coming in sparing or whatever, but uh, – Quarterback had a little bit. We had one uh, one defensive guy, uh, uh, Jacory Freeman, uh, had some uh, varsity experience, and we had a few wide receivers had sprinkled in there. But overall, with the spring, I was I was able to observe. I was trying to see what was going on, and I was pleasantly surprised, especially uh, having five new offensive linemen up that we were able to run the ball. But I, I do think we we're able to run the ball because I think we have one of the best kept secrets. Me personally, I believe in the state. A uh, kid by the name of Caleb Joseph. Uh, I I can't say enough about the kid. This this is one of the kids that you know all the time saying is I'm gonna stand on the table for this kid or whatever. He wore number uh, six in the spring, right? Wore number six. Yeah, he ran wore number six. Real, real, kid real, average. Real well. uh, came out the spring game averaging uh, six yards carry. Uh, downhill runner, real physical kid. Right. Uh, had the body type mentality. But more so from from the time we went into that spring practice, <coughs> man, he's the type of kid that uh, for those guys on your on your team, you all you know you playing for a championship. Correct. And he, he's just that type of on the field talent and off the field talent. Uh, we had another another kid, uh, Jaden Bagwell, uh, transfer in kid, uh, kid played cornerback and wide receiver and. Uh, like he he stood out to me and it was like okay man this this kid right here is gonna actually be able to give us something well we got we we I do feel like we have a cornerback and a wide receiver. he plays both sides of the right, ball right. we have a cornerback and wide receiver who can out stop plays make plays on defense but also give us the opportunity to make plays on offense and we have another young guy coming up uh Jacory Freeman uh number seven 
Okay. Played uh played H back tight end, also played linebacker. Linebacker wise, he reminded me of, of Brian Erlacher, but over the summer with seven on seven, been able to see. I'm thinking mindset, hey man, we're gonna build the defense and we're gonna make sure on offense. But man, this kid in seven on seven is as it's just dynamic as far as ball ball getting the ball raised, catching it, anything around him, he catching it, he feels go up there. So he's going to be a talent with us. And uh, we got another great offensive young lineman coming up, uh, Corey and Newman. Uh, we also have Otis. Uh, and then we have uh, Emmanuel Williams coming up. So we got some young guys. We got a great young uh, kid coming up as a sophomore, Jaden Jackson. Okay. I think it's, uh, I really do, me being an offense line background right. and seeing offense linemen, this kid got the potential to be one of those guys that uh, we're going to see playing for the next six or seven years, possibly. Well, he, he should play football at least for the next right. six or seven years. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, uh, I know you took over in the spring as interim, and then, you know, you um, eventually coming on as the head coach. Uh, did you have a big, big, big part in the new schedule? Um, I know it's the new cycle of, of putting those new non-district games, and then um, I don't know if the district changed any. Um, mm -hmm. Our, this year. our district pretty much stayed the same. Uh, schedule was already made for me when okay. I came out. Uh, Coach, Coach Wade had already uh, established schedule. And, you know, it's a lot of building on what he established. Right. You know, I, I, I was able to be with Coach Wade uh, from when he got here. And uh, so it was, a lot of that stuff was already in. We changed a few things with the spring game. We were supposed to play. Uh, uh, Woodlawn initially, okay. but with, with conflict, a couple of things, we tried to get two of them. We were able to get like a, a, a practice to get some more days in, and so we said we're going to change that up to uh, to mentorship, okay. just so we could push our spring game back and right. everything like that. And uh, it, 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 So as far as the schedule, we have Everything was laid out for me, okay. and I think we have a good schedule. We're any new uh, teams that was on that? Because I know you were part of that. Like, any new teams on there? Oh, uh, new year? team we playing Baker. Baker okay. is gonna right. be a new team. Then uh, Glen Oaks is actually coming on, and I, I want to say Glen Oaks and Bel Air used to be a rivalry back in the day. And yeah. so we're trying to uh, we're gonna have that. Try to make a big thing. We're gonna do it on Thursday night. Try to okay. kind of like yeah. NFL open the night right. or whatever. What we're ahead of. That's gonna be week one. Week one. Okay. Week one is gonna be uh, that Thursday night game with Glen Oaks, and I, I've already. Uh, talk with Coach Anthony over there, and uh, we gonna we gonna try to do something. With it also being our 50 year anniversary of our school, okay. So we're gonna try to do something a lot with our alumni and get right, get them right, involved right. and everything like that, and just just show we the rebirth of Bel Air. Yeah, we want yeah, we want we want to show it and, and uh, kind of kind of show the images. That Bel Air has a a, 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 a a reputation that doesn't that's not really Bel Air. And uh, overall, with the school and, and, and things, so we we just want to bring all that out and kind of broadcast some of the things that we're doing right here. We have great kids overall, and also we have great staff backing us behind yeah. it. And uh, with actually one of this, I think we have one of the top uh, media programs in in the state in uh, LTC. So we want to highlight the whole school and kind of get the whole community. Uh, involvement in, in that and also even trying to do things where we bring in our Hispanic community because we have such a large uh, ESL community in the school and so man with our kids that we have on the team coming back and they've taken that challenge up this summer they, okay. they, they want to be the model we have kids uh, that that have just done spectacular kid like uh, Chicago Prophet Great track kid, been out there and man, profit is working every day to to be to have hands and things of that right. nature. And I mean, he he one of the kids. He meets me at practice, and when I'm coming here around the block from the school, I'm trying to get there early, thirty minutes early. I see profit either walking there, profit sitting there before, and so we we have a, a lot of great <coughs> kids that's coming in and buying in. And trying to change the culture and the image of, of everything like that. Gotcha. So I was going to ask about the um, principal, about the staff, and about the, the, the support. You know, bringing you in, and um, you know, obviously giving you the head coaching job, and um, and trusting in you. Know, you know, how was that process, and you know, how how did that you know kind of come about? I know um, 
again, like you said, Coach Wade, he was there, but then, you know, obviously he moved on. Yeah. And then I know they were looking for a guy. I know you stepped in the NRO, role, and then I, obviously, man, looking at it and being able to work with the principal and people like that, you know, how was that transition? I, I realized we, we actually transitioning principals right now. Our principal okay. Just, uh, she, she's uh, taking a new job, new career path. But, uh, man, the, the process of getting that mark is, is it's something I, I never wanted to be a head coach, man. I always say I, I was head coach in baseball and I was like, man, I wanna be I want coach I'm a football coach. Right, I want right. to be able to coach football. And I didn't head coach, I realized you lose a lot of the ability to be a football coach Correct. with everything yes. that you have right. to do and people don't realize <laughs> that. Right, right. But man, I, I have been blessed, Marcus. I, right. I, I gotta say, man, I I've been on some of the greatest tutelage, I believe, starting with Michael Roach. Yeah. It's like, if anybody tell me uh, it's a better coach that come out of Louisiana or Baton Rouge other than Michael Roach, we might have to go outside right. the most Right, right, right. I don't know. believe so. And that, yeah, that, yeah, he, yeah, he, he's, he's the dad. Yeah, nah, he and follow, followed by that with Doug Williams. Doug Williams and, yep. Man, like, I actually did this camp the other day, and Coach Williams was one of the first person called me. Actually, one of the first people got me when I got through playing, uh, he said, man, I think you're going to be a great coach. You right. brought me on. Uh, Mickey Joseph, yeah. first high school. High. So it was like, I talked to all these guys, and I say, man, and... Hey, you got a legendary tree. Oh, uh, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, it, it, it was sitting over. Burton Burns, one of my mentors. Yeah. So it's like, man, I, I called guys and, and say, but I didn't want to do it because I always said I wanted to coach football. And me and Coach Burns joked about it. He said, man, yeah, you... I, I set up as assistant coach because I get to coach football. Right. But uh, man, I was actually sitting there, and Coach Turner asked me about it, and I said, "Let's let's let's see, we'll put it out there." And I watched something one time, and it's, uh, it was a thing where it said uh, <coughs> on the show, God said, "God gonna put opportunities in you in you in your path, and it's not gonna be when you're ready for it. Not yeah. even gonna think that you you want that opportunity right now." But that's the opportunity that you have to take. Yep. And I was like, why am I in this coaching? And I'm in the coaching. We always won a football game. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the first things I understand, being able, my dad played with, played for Eddie Robb. I knew Eddie Robb. Me and my dad worked on all coach Robb houses. I was up at Gramlin every day. You know, I stayed in his apartments or whatever. One of my biggest, one of the biggest disappointments I have is I had the opportunity to play for him, but. I studied with Coach Roach, he coached me in high school and worked out. But Coach Rob told me something, he said, young coach, uh, it's only going to be one champion every year, but you got an opportunity as a football coach to create 50 to 60 champion men every year. Right. And eventually, if you do that, you're going to win a championship. But you're going to judge your career off of, will these guys come talk to you 20 years from now? And did you put him in a 20-year plan or did you put him in a four-year plan that benefited you? And so when I thought about that, I say, man, it's a it's an opportunity for me to put all that stuff. God has, has given me, blessed me with all the opportunities to learn that stuff, to be around these people. It's my duty to try to put that out there. And man, I'm I do not deserve to be the, the, the head coach of Bel Air. It, it's because of people put me in position. Byron Wade, uh, Verdi Baptiste, Coach Turner welcomed me when I got there, staff, uh, Ms. Ms. Boudreaux, Mr. Wright. It's like anything that I want to do with the, with the football team, and we have, a, we have a big, I have a big vision for it. I have a vision of Bel Air being a, a Madison Prep, a Catholic High, a Zachary type, and I, I tell our kids, why do we not have it here? And it's because we haven't put forth the effort to get it, and that's on us to go out there and grab that, and that's on us to carry ourselves with that. But it starts, it starts in the in the classroom. Yep. It starts outside. I, I tell my kids all the time that when you come to our school, the first thing they go through is the attendance office, then they get to the administrative office, then they get to the counselor. And if you notice, all our sports are way in the back of school. So if you're looking to go to college, that coach is going to come here and see, are you at school? Then when you're at school, are you are you doing the things that you're supposed to do in school, discipline-wise, and in the classroom? Right. And then if you pass all those three checks, why well, can go talk to coach? If you don't pass those three checks, I can't talk I to you. Don't waste my time. Because me personally, being on on 
then have some years in college, uh, coach the staff at Groundland, it's like the, the the worst thing in the world is that three o'clock. Or you get that guy, we used to have to say, man, we had a guy at Grandma Lane House, like, yeah, every, nobody wanted to see Lane, because when Lane walked around, he was like, hey, you can't, you're not playing. <laughs> you know, you wasn't else, but that was the right. compliance officer or whatever grade. And so, it's like, man, but more so than that is that 20 year plan, because I, 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 I equip it to this. Yeah. If we're going to, from Baton Rouge to Los Angeles, hey man, it's a lot of cities that you turn off I-10 and go to and have a great time. You can go to Austin, you can go to Dallas. Man, you, you can turn off any which way. You can go up to Vegas, never get there. But you're never getting to your destination, you just drive. So we know we're going to LA, so we know right now, hey, I need to stay on I-10, this is my path. All those things look good, but all thing that's gonna do is distract me yeah. and waste time that I don't have. Because time is the one resource that we cannot replace. We can replace. In this modern day age, you can get a new arm. But can't nobody go back to yesterday. Yep. Can't nobody go back to 10 minutes ago. So what are we doing to control this three-foot area that we in to make sure it's leading to our 20-year plan? And after we control this three-foot, realize that one thing, the best step we're going to ever take in life is that next step. Yeah, next and that's a, that's the philosophy that we have. More so than football is ingrained that philosophy because you as a coach know, coach, you're going to have a game plan and when you get out there two, three plays later, that game plan is yeah. dead. Yeah. So my kids don't understand that, hey, we <clears throat> planned everything, but we messed up now. The game plan is right. not what we got. What can we do? Let's sit up here. What do we have in this three-foot area right here? What can we change? What can we control? And once we do that, let's take the next step. Let's take the next step. We don't try to win games. We just try to win the play. There it is. Yeah. Win six seconds at a time. Yeah. Well, Coach, man, we um, glad you came in with it. We're going to definitely right. be following y'all guys on this journey y'all on down I-10. Yeah, and doing, man. Man. Hey. And man, appreciate you coming in. Um, I know you mentioned the Glenos game first first week of the year. Um, Thursday, man, we're gonna definitely have that on our. Oh yeah, um, come on, on out, man. We're gonna try to have everything out there. We're gonna try to do a whiteout. There it is. We're gonna follow y'all, man. Um, oh. man, you here with Gridiron Football? Stay locked in.